Brother Imhotep, Happy New Year. I haven't seen you since uh, 2017. Exactly, exactly. How you doing, Cliff? Hey, Happy New Year to you too as well, man. Good to uh, good to be in the studio in the daytime. Yes, it's been a while since I've done that, man. But hey, Happy New Year to you too. How's it going? I am doing quite well. We got Mike William Hotep here, of yes. course. We have Miss Rachel here. Miss Charsana is here. Yeah, I got your name on the air. Anyway, Charsana, yes. I just met her, in new intern. And we are ready yep. to share in this information. Now, you have coming up mm -hmm. on Sunday, January 14th, from 2 till 6 p.m., uh, a fascinating lecture yes. entitled African American Resistance in the Era of Donald Trump, colon, Voter Suppression, Reparations and New Elections have consequences, oh, excuse me, and how elections have consequences, what in the world could that exactly. possibly be about Michael M. Hotel? Exactly, how elections have consequences. So, you know, I, I've done this presentation a few times, and um, it's been updated, of course, because things just keep changing day by day. But uh, I was in Los Angeles uh, this past uh, New Year's Eve doing this presentation, okay? I was at the Caress Unity Center. I was in Los Angeles this, uh, Saturday, December 30th, Sunday, December 31st. And this uh, presentation, actually, I first did it for uh, African Liberation Day here in Detroit at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. Mm -hmm. And what we look at, uh, we look at a few things. Number one, we look at similarities in the rise of Donald Trump uh, and him becoming president. We look at similarities between that and Richard Nixon becoming president, okay? Because there's similarities when you look at the conditions that were going on in this country. Uh, number one, so Richard Nixon becomes president. Uh, he wins the election uh, in 1968. Okay, so he was a backlash to two terms. I'm sorry, he was a backlash to the civil rights movement, to the black power movement that we see starting in 1966. Right. He was a backlash to affirmative action. Mm -hmm. uh, he was also um, a backlash to any perceived gains that African Americans were making as well, as well as he was a backlash to the rebellions that were taking place all across this country. Was Nixon the first Republican candidate for president to use a so-called Southern strategy? Uh, I, I don't think he was the. I don't think he was the first one. He, he may have been. I'm not sure. I don't remember if he was the first. Republican candidate to use the Southern strategy, but but remember, is because of the he, he may have been possibly because what happened was mm -hmm. because of the Civil Rights Act of '64 and the Voting Rights Act of '65, you're going to have a flip in the parties, and largely these obstructionist Democrats, right, are going to leave the Democratic Party and go to the Republican Party, right, and you're going to have a lot of African Americans who historically voted Republican, okay. Uh, because of Frederick Douglass and, and different things like this, they historically voted Republican. You're going to have a continuation and a lot of them switching over and voting Democratic as well. So, you, um, if, if for instance, when we look at the rebellions that are taking place, it wasn't just the Detroit Rebellion started July 23rd, 1967. You have Watts Rebellion. You have, um, in 1967 alone, 1967, the summer, was known as the Long Hot Summer. Yes. So in 67 alone, you have 159 violent uprisings across this Including country. Including Detroit. Including Detroit, yeah. Now, all of them were not on the scale of Detroit or Newark, New Jersey or things like this, right? Mm -hmm. But you're going to have 159 rebellions. This leads to July 28th, uh, 1967, the day after the uh, Detroit Rebellion ends, this leads to uh, President Johnson convening the, uh, the Carter uh, the, Commission. The Kerner Commission right. Yeah, the the the, the uh, um, uh, Commission for uh, Civil Disorders, right? right? Named after Otto uh, Kerner, who was the governor of uh, Ohio, I think it was, or Illinois. Mm -hmm. So, you have all this taking place leading up to Nixon becoming president, and Nixon runs on the platform of law and order. Yes. Okay. Donald Trump partly ran on the platform of law and order as well. When you look at Trump, you see Trump was a direct backlash to two terms of President Barack Obama, the first African American president, because John Hansen, the black John Hansen, was not president. All right, we can talk about that if people want to, but right. <laughs> I've right. totally dispelled that myth, and others have as well. Uh, he's a, he was a, a, a backlash to the Black Lives Matter movement because mm -hmm. Trump it does not talk about holding police accountable at all. Right. Period. Right. Okay. Um, and he was uh, he was a, a backlash to the browning of America because there's a fear not all white people but there's a fear about many white people of becoming a quote unquote racial minority. Right. 
And the reason why is because they know that for decades and hundreds of years, Thank they have mistreated that. racial minorities, mm -hmm. and they're afraid what was done unto them, will, what they've done unto others, right. will be done unto them. And the demographers tell us that it is inevitable that there will be more people okay. of color right. in this country sure. than white people. In fact, there are 2043. More, yeah, there are 2043. More, more babies of color being born in this country than whites right now. Absolutely, absolutely. 2043, uh, you, you would not have any one ethnic group or race that's the majority okay so you have some white people not all of them but you have some who fear this and they're being fed this type of fear on the fox news network breitbart that just got rid of uh right. stephen k bannon yesterday right, right? right. 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 <laughs> one of the poster boys of white supremacy so when we look at this we see trump uh, uh, runs on the platform of law and order. We see that uh, Trump uh, talks about how Mexicans are taking away people's jobs, things like this. What Trump didn't say is that factory output had doubled since the 1980s, but co corporations are doing it with one-third the labor force because right. of automation, technology, software programs, things like this, that are eliminating millions of middle-class jobs. Okay. Now, at the same time that this is taking place, right, Right now, you got more unfilled jobs in, in this country than, you, than you've had in the last 17 years. Yes. But that's a trend that started under President Obama. Because yes. when you go back to April of 2016, you had about 5 million unfilled jobs in this country. So that's a trend that continues. So when we, when we look at Nixon and Trump, we see, uh, very, we see similarities in what was going on in this country. And uh, we all, we, uh, you know, Roland Martin talks about, who I used to guest host his national radio show a lot. Uh, you know, Roland Martin talks about how uh, the, uh, Donald Trump is the end of the third reconstruction for African Americans. Mm -hmm. We look at the, we look at the uh, reconstruction uh, with uh, the end of reconstruction in 1877. Mm -hmm. you, you, anytime you have a, a, a period of time of significant advancement that African Americans make, you always have a white backlash to this. Right. Okay, right. and, and we see Trump being that as well. So we'll deal with that. We'll deal with the rapid voter suppression that took place in the 2016 election. Mm -hmm. which gerrymandering. Is the gerrymandering, right. Well, it, it wasn't just the gerrymandering. You had 14 new states that had new voter ID laws right. because um, Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act in 1965 was struck down because of the Supreme Court uh, uh, case of Shelby County versus Holder of 2013, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, one of the things I deal with is how laws impacts every aspect of our lives. Because, and, and, and laws are made by politicians. This is why politicians are called right. lawmakers, right? So two ways to understand politics. Number one, the legal distribution of scarce wealth, power, and resources. Uh, number two, the writing of law, statutes, ordinances, amendments, and, treat and treaties, their adoption, interpretation, and enforcement. So when we look at this, we see that you had uh, 14 new uh, states that had new voter ID laws. You had 868 fewer polling places this, yes. this past election cycle that very few people want to talk about. Right. And, and I have to mention, too, Go ahead. that as soon as the Supreme Court took the teeth out of the Voting Rights Act, yes. These southern states acted with the quickness to exactly. change their laws. Exactly. There was no debate over it. They weren't saying, hmm, should it's, we change this? Exactly. They couldn't wait. Exactly. But this was ruled by the Supreme Court. So it's important to look at this, right? So this is Shelby County versus Holder. Where is Shelby County located? Is located in Alabama. Right. <laughs> okay? It's located in Alabama. Now, we know Senator Jefferson Beauregard Sessions III, former senator, who's now the attorney general, right? right? One of the most backwards attorney generals we ever had. But he, he cheered the gutting of the Voting Rights Act. We know that in 1986, he was deemed too racist to be a federal judge, yes. right? And uh, and we know that it was Coretta Scott King, the widow of Dr. King, who sent an eight or nine page letter to the Senate Judiciary Committee that was over, over the confirmation hearings, saying that if he if if he became a federal judge, it would undo her husband's legacy. Yes. Now, Shelby County is a white, uh, mainly white suburb in Alabama. Mm -hmm. They voted heavily for Roy Moore in this past special election for a senator in Alabama. Yes. They sued Attorney General Eric Holder. Yep. That's the holder. That's the yep. defendant, right? Yep. So th what, the, what the Supreme Court did was they gutted Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act. So a lot of people think the Voting Rights Act has no purpose. No, it does. Okay, yes. what Section 5 dealt with was pre-clearance, and what it stated was that these former states that had a history of putting obstacles in the way of African Americans voting, okay, literacy tests, poll taxes, things like this, many of them in these former Confederate states, 
like Alabama, that took up arms against the Union, broke away from the Union in 1860 and 1861, and fought the Civil War to keep slavery in place. Right. They said it was for states' rights, but it was states' rights to no, hold slaves. No. Right. It was states' rights to maintain slaves. Exactly. This is what this was about. Okay? So they said that any changes that they wanted to make in the location of polling places, how many uh, weekends you can have uh, souls to the polls and early voting, they had to get approval from a federal judge. Right. Sex, striking down Section 5 weakened the Voting Rights Act and took away this preclearance. Yes. So then, after this, you have all these new, uh, new round of voter ID laws, but 2016 was the first presidential election yes. that you did not have the full weight of the Voting Rights Act, and we also saw a seven-point drop in the turnout of African Americans, because yes. in 2012, it was a record number of African Americans who voted in that 2012 presidential election. 66% of African Americans who, who registered to vote voted. This scared the hell out of Republicans. Yes. This scared them to death because they said, uh oh, they're flexing their, their, their and, political and probably power. Some Democrats. And, and probably some Democrats <laughs> also, right. So what, what happened was here they come, now the Section 5 is struck down the next year, 2013. Yes. Okay, yes. so now they come back, and, and a lot of us didn't understand what was taking place with these voter ID laws, you know, and the voter suppression laws. I talked about this on my show and here on the 19 AM Superstation, and some of us are still clueless about what happened. Okay, so we're gonna break we're gonna break this down because these laws are still in place. Mm -hmm. November uh, 6, 2018, midterm elections are crucial. All 435 seats in the House of Representatives are up. Right. Okay. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, first of all, Michael Mholtep. Uh, one of our favorite guests in the studio with us. Our number is 313-778-7600. I see folks on the phone line. We're going to get to you shortly. But before we do, i got to ask you, Mike. Go ahead. At what point, well, let me, let me, let me figure out the best way to phrase this. Okay. Uh, earlier this week, mm -hmm. I talked about how given everything that we see happening in the White House and with Donald Trump and with the Republican Congress and all of that, that uh, I asked the question, are there still black men who are willing to get up, get out, protest, do what they have to do to fight for their rights? And I referenced that famous picture from Memphis where all those black men who were sanitation workers had to sign, I am a man. A man. Oh, yeah. So the question I have is, one, is there a black organizing that is taking place now? Mm -hmm. And do we still, as a community, have the will to oppose the things that you were just talking about. Oh, absolutely. You have African Americans organizing across the country. We see them organizing and fighting back in St. Louis. Uh, in St. Louis, you had the acquittal of Officer Jason Shockley and the killing of Anthony Lamar Smith. You have economic boycotts declared by clergy, declared by businessmen and women in St. Louis going on right now. Okay, And, and during the um, uh, Christmas season, they were talking about uh, no justice, no profit. They set up a website that deals with this. AtlantaBlackStar.com has, uh, has, uh, has had articles about this. Black America Web. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, people can check out this article from uh, AtlantaBlackStar.com. Black St. Louis leaders call on supporters to boycott Target, the department store, in wake of officers' acquittal. Black St. Louis leaders call on supporters to boycott Target in wake of officers' acquittal. We see people pushing back uh, uh, with the... Um, uh, uh, NAACP Legal Defense Fund. We see the uh, Lawyers Guild. I forgot the exact name of the Lawyers Guild. Kristen mm -hmm. Clark is with them. But they have been engaged in suing, uh, being involved in lawsuits in various states like Texas that have been, have, have been engaged in voter suppression. Mm -hmm. uh, we see um, people fighting back. We look at colorchange.org, right? right. Colorchange.org was at the forefront of uh, getting Bill O'Reilly off the air off of Fox News, who was the darling of the, uh, the cable news network TV shows, had the highest rated cable news network show for something like 10, 13 years. And they put pressure on various corporations, advertisers, yes. to withdraw economic support from his show. And 80 advertisers canceled their ads with the uh, O'Reilly Factor and uh, ended up with Fox News firing him. So, okay. so black folks are not only involved, but maybe at the vanguard of the resistance movement yes. against Trump and the Republicans. Before we go further, let me take yeah. a couple of phone calls. We got Michael M. Holtep in the studio, and our number is 313-778-7600. Let's go to Michael, who is on line four. Hey, Michael, thanks for calling and waiting. You're on with Michael M. Holtep. Hey, Cliff, thanks for taking my call. Uh, you said something I found to be extraordinary. Um, in a country with a history of presidents like Andrew Jackson, 
but uh, an LBJ who called us the N word, mm-hmm. who hated, who hated Kenny Lou Hamer, mm-hmm. and to say that Donald Trump is the worst president when we had Woodrow Wilson, I, I can't go that far. But I just in, in recent times, in, in recent times, but I ain't say he's the worst president. I ain't say he's the worst president, but in recent times, probably so. Like, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Like I said, Cliff. Yeah. Said Cliff. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Right? go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. So, the states that was covered by Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act was Arizona, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and Virginia. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Mm-hmm. Donald Trump lost Virginia. Okay. He won all the rest of the southern states. And guess what? Mm-hmm. Obama didn't win those states either. So, if it's the gutting of the civil of the Voting Rights Act that led to Donald Trump, then how is it that Donald Trump did worse in the South than President Obama did? My point is this. You guys may not like Trump, fine. I don't think he's the greatest, smartest guy, but he's the president. My point is, is that once we as black folks realize that our power is when we depended on ourselves, when we did for ourselves, and we didn't depend on the Uncle Sam government, then that's when we're going to do something. But if we think that voting for a Democrat or a Republican is going to be our salvation and it's going to be what gets us something in this country, we will never get anything if we're subjected to the whims Mm -hmm. of the political field every four to six years voting for our president, senator, or house rep. Let, 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 me, let me address your, let me address and, and Michael, your comments. First of all, let me say this. Excellent call. I appreciate it very much. I have said many times that when it comes to Democrats and Republicans, mm-hmm. we're really talking about Tweedledee and Tweedledum. But let me let Michael M. Hotep address your remarks. Okay, number one, I didn't say that we should rely on politics, but politics does impact every aspect of our life, number one. Number two, if you uh, look at what happened in the 2016 election cycle, you had rampant voter suppression. That's undeniable, okay? With now, whether Trump or not, and I need to look at those states once again and see how he won. We do know that Trump won Alabama by 30 points. We do know that, okay? Uh, now, and he and, and, and actually, Trump won the South. Trump, uh, send me that information, info at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, if you're trying to say a lot of those Southern states. Well, Trump, he, Trump he, lost. He, he knew Trump, that Trump, Trump won those Southern right. states. He they knew they were they won those states. He said that he didn't do as well as an Obama did in the South, but that's not the point. The point is he won. Yeah, yeah, he won. There was rampant voter suppression. There was lawsuits by the Democrats in various states. And then also there was voter intimidation that took place. But the voter suppression was deliberate, deliberate, and they were trying to shave off one or two percentage points in key battleground states. We also also had the cross-checking system that he didn't want to mention. Mike didn't mention the cross-checking system. There are not 1.1 million people off the voter rolls as well. We know know about this also. Okay. Now, I'm neither Democrat nor Republican. But but, but, but when we look look at where most of these draconian laws and harmful laws are coming from on a national basis, they're coming from Republicans. When you when you actually read them and look at who's drawing these bills up and who's voting for them, okay. Right, right. So um, you, you know, people need to study Section Five of the Voting Rights Act. Study what happened, and there was 16.4 million African Americans that voted. Right, uh, the Russian hacking, uh, the Russian involvement did play a part. No because you, because you had a lot of fake uh, uh, news stories on Facebook, right? right? Targeting Hillary Clinton. You had fake news stories about Black Lives Matter and things like this, right? But no, that does not negate what I'm talking well, about. Well, it also came out too, if I can add, that the Russians hacking went into some very specific voter districts in this country, and mm-hmm. by and large, they were black or people of color. Were the Russians went into the voting districts and tried to do their dirt. Let me take another quick phone call oh, yeah. before we have to head toward the break. Deshaun is on line six. Hey, Deshaun, thanks for calling. Good afternoon. You're on with Michael and Hotel. Okay. Um, yeah, um, one of the questions I was like, because two, because, you know, your last call and the one about the Bible, mm-hmm. you just tell them to stop using the Bible, okay? <laughs> and um, as we go for the voter depression, uh, how many states have been uh, dealing with that issue for and how long? How many states have been dealing with voter suppression? Yeah, I mean, how long? I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to let Mike give the official Mm -hmm. answer. Any state where you have Republicans, you have some effort for voter suppression. But I'll I'll let Mike verify or refute that. Well, the the exact number of states that had um, 
voter suppression laws. I don't remember exactly. I know we have 14 new states that had them in this 2016 election cycle. You're going to have you're going to have this really become an issue going back to 2010 during the midterm election. Okay, and it was 2010 that that you had the rise of the Tea Party and people found out about the Koch brothers. Okay, Charles and David Koch. So you, you're going to have you're going to have them take place then, and then after 2012, you're going to have it in 2012 as well. But after 2012, because of the striking down of uh, Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act, you're going to have a whole new round of them, because now that preclearance is is taken away, and they don't have to get approval from a federal judge, okay, to make any type of changes. All right, and and once again, uh, people should read the article from thenation.com by Ari Berman that dealt with 868 fewer polling places that uh, that, that 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 existed in 2016. Yeah, and and okay? where did those polling places happen to uh, exist? Well, they were, well, a lot of them were in the south. A lot of them were in the south. You're gonna have some in the north also, but a lot of them were in the south. Right. And the uh, and the other thing is, you, there was voter apathy uh, uh, that took place uh, among African Americans as well. But you had a lot of voter suppression and voter intimidation. There were lawsuits against the Trump campaign because of voter intimidation yes. as well. And we know Trump told his followers to go into certain neighborhoods, right? Uh, you're talking about Chicago and <laughs> Philadelphia. Go into certain neighborhoods uh, and, and and look around and make sure everything's on the up and up. He didn't tell them to go into their own neighborhood. Right. And go to their own polling places and do this, right? Right. He was talking about going into places where people of color are. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Let's take one more phone call before we uh, try to get to a break. And we, we got Mike Will Holtz up in the studio for at least another half hour. Yes. So he ain't going nowhere. Yes. And let's go to Sharon, who's on line two right now. Hey, Sharon, thanks for calling. You're on with Mike and Holtz. Yep. Good afternoon to you, Cliff, and to Mike. Hey, Good Sharon. I want to say, when it comes to this, uh, it's going to be more more blacks in the United States than whites. That's never going to happen. No, that's not what we said. That's not what we said. No, I, I, I have said it because I've read it that the demographers have already said there was an article, a famous one, I think, on Newsweek years ago mm -hmm. that talked about the browning of America. Browning, yes. Yes, which yeah. means there will be more people, more people of color. More, than whites. Yeah, I didn't yeah. say black folks. Yeah. I'm talking about people of color, be they African American, Latino, yeah. Asian, what have you. Right. Hey, I need to interject, but anyway, yeah, even though they might be people of color, a lot of them are saying that they white. They're not saying they're black. They white. So there's more whites add on every day in this country. And they never mention anything about the white people that come from Europe to this country every day. The ones come from other countries as white. Mm -hmm. And as far as my calculations, this at least 60% white people. Then we got the 12% black African Americans. We got... Like eight percent Latinos, and we got, uh, see, I got this down here. Yeah, sixty about sixty three percent white, uh, fourteen percent. Like six, six, six percent we got like uh, mm -hmm. the Indians. We got like five percent Chaldeans, three percent Asians, and anyway, and, right. and still we got a lot of them that said they white. They do not say they black. And same thing with with the Italians. They black, black. But they, they say they white. <laughs> not according, yeah, you, you, not, not according to the U.S. Census Bureau. You, you, in this country. You even, and I appreciate the call, Sharon. Thank you very much. Hey, you even got some black folks who are still passing in this country. Uh, right. Any thoughts on that? We're just about to break time. Mike. Well, well uh, first of all, 14% African Americans in this country, about 63% uh, 63 white. So 2043, demographers have said, and they had to speed this up, that you will have no one dominant racial group or ethnic group in this country okay uh it is true the u.s census classifies arabs as white that is true they classify those immigrating from north africa and the so-called middle east as white you have some hispanics that think of themselves as white, but right. Donald Trump supporters don't think of them as white. You and we, and we can see how they are attacked by Donald yes. Trump supporters. You will, uh, a real quick story before we go to a break. I remember yeah. when I lived in El Paso, Texas, mm -hmm. uh, the working class and poor Mexicans mm -hmm. were Mexican and very proud to claim so. Right. The very wealthy Mexicans uh, said they were not uh, Mexican, they were Spanish. Mm -hmm. And that they were white, they, and they, times, they were siding with the oppressors. That's exactly, why they speak Spanish because exactly, they were conquered by Spain. Exactly. That's and, why. And they, yeah. uh, in fact, they 
uh, had more disdain for blacks than many whites did. Well, they've sometimes. been too old white supremacy in the global system. Yeah, they don't want to be <laughs> well, identified. Their biggest fear right. was to be identified with me. Now, some of them have more white ancestry than Native American and African ancestry. One. Two, white supremacy is a global system that works 24 7. That's what All we right. have to understand. We got to take a break right now, folks. We got Mike William Holtep in the studio. If you're still on the line, stay there. We'll get to you. If not, you can be. Call us at 313 778 7600, and we will we'll be right back. This is 9 10 a.m. Superstation, the future of radio. This Sunday, uh, January 14th, at the new Nanny's Knowledge Cafe, 71 Oakman Avenue in Highland Park, Michigan, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., when we go in depth into this. It's called African American Resistance in the Era of Donald Trump, Voter Suppression, Reparations, and How Elections Have Consequences. So, um, we can't, so right before the break, we were talking about, um, we talked about Richard Nixon some, how there were similarities mm -hmm. in Richard Nixon and uh, Donald Trump as well. Uh, and Trump ran on the platform of law and order that we talked about. Another thing is that, uh, we know, Richard Nixon started the war on drugs. The war on drugs started June 17, 1971, okay? Right. Didn't start with the crime bill, September 13, 1994, under Bill Clinton. And also, a lot of people don't know, it was... Um, it was uh, Senator Joe Biden who wrote the uh, majority of the crime bill. He mm -hmm. wrote the majority of the crime bill. He was the main sponsor of the crime bill. He worked on that crime bill for six years. Right. So um, you, you just had the redeclaration of the war on drugs May 12, 2017, right. that Jefferson Board of Assessors III did. And, and, and before you go, go forward, though, you got to explain at least a little bit about what John Ehrlichman said about the real reason. <laughs> right, right. Okay. This is war on drugs. <laughs> right, and I deal with that. I deal with that in the presentation because we go we go in depth into this. Right. So what happened was John Ehrlichman was um, Richard Nixon's domestic policy advisor. Okay. And the other one of the other similarities here, right, <laughs> is 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 uh, Nixon resigned from office. Okay. Nixon resigned from office. Nixon, even though articles of impeachment were drawn up against Richard Nixon, first article of impeachment was obstruction of justice, second article of impeachment was abuse of power, which sounds just like Donald Trump, right? Right, right, right. right. But, but, but Republicans put pressure on Nixon to resign from office. So he became the first sitting president to resign uh, from office August 9th, 1974. Um, so you had uh, 48 people around Richard Nixon went to prison, by the way, because of... Uh, the Watergate, okay, mm -hmm. and it, it wasn't the break-in that did it, it was the cover-up, right. okay, right. This, this guy tried to use the CIA to get the FBI to back off the investigation, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> he tried to get Special Prosecutor Archibald Cox fired, right. all this stuff, right? Sounds real familiar. It sounds very familiar to, to Donald John Trump. Yes. So, um, Earl uh was his domestic policy advisor, he does 18 uh, months in a federal prison. He's interviewed in 1994 by a journalist named Dan Baum, B-A-U-M. Okay, so Dan Baum writes a uh, front page, he writes the cover story for the April 2016 edition of uh, Harper's Magazine, mm -hmm. okay? And the name of the article is called Legalize It All, How to Win the War on Drugs, Legalize It All. And in the article, he talks about how uh, John Ehrlichman told him that the, he said, you really want to know what the war on drugs was about. And he said that the war on drugs, he said what they did was, he said they knew that they, they could not make it illegal to be against the Vietnam War, because mm -hmm. Vietnam was going on then, right? right, right. Could not be against the Vietnam War, and you could not make it illegal to be black. Okay, he said, but by associating the hippies or the anti-war movement with marijuana mm -hmm. and associating the African-American community with heroin, he said we knew we could then raid their offices, we can do surveillance in their communities, we could break up their meetings, things like this, we could incarcerate them. And, and they said that we would run stories on the evening news night after night, right, to justify this. So uh, Nixon had to go before Congress to declare the war on drugs and get funding for it. Yes. And then when you look at what, what he's saying, he's basically lying, okay, to them. Boy, that sounds familiar, too. That sounds familiar, but it also goes back to 1937 to Harry J. Anslinger, yes. right? Yes. To Harry J. Anslinger, who was the first chairman of the National Narcotics Commission. Yes. And he lied in his testimony in front of Congress, okay? Because there were rumors back then that bl that white women craved black men sexually when they were high on marijuana, yes. okay? And he talked about how the people using marijuana were Negroes and Filipinos and Mexicans and jazz singers and things like this. 
cannabis. As long as white people were using hemp or cannabis, it was okay. Right. Right? But now that you have these other ethnic groups using it, now they, they instituted, 37, they instituted the uh, marijuana prohibition tax, right? Mm -hmm. To essentially make it illegal. If you just look at what happened in the state of Kansas, right? A couple of days ago, you had Representative uh, Steve Alford, Republican from Kansas, who basically said that he was against legalizing marijuana, and one of the reasons he said this to an all-white crowd, rawstory.com reported on this, and um, uh, he, he, he said that, uh, he said, you go back and look at the prohibition in the 1930s, he said, uh, of marijuana, he said it was primarily because that black marijuana usage uh, was, was uh, African Americans handled marijuana differently, and they reacted differently to it than white people did. Okay. This this is what wow. he said. He said, quote, what you really need to do is go back in the 30s when they outlawed all types of drugs in Kansas and across the United States. He said, what was the reason why they did that? One of the reasons why, I hate to say it, was that the African Americans, they were basically users and they basically responded the worst off to those drugs just because of their character makeup, their genetics and that, end quote. Now, this is a sitting state yes. senator, oh, it was state representative, sorry, state representative, in Kansas, right. who and, said this? Right, and we're talking about this week. Yes, yes. Read this article, rawstory.com. This is this story is from January eighth, two thousand eighteen, two days ago. Kansas Republican lawmaker says black people can't handle marijuana because of their genetics. But this, but this goes back into history. And when you study the history of drug laws in this country, as long as white people were using the drugs. It was legal, yes. okay? The, the first drug laws go back to about 1875 with the anti-opium laws in San Francisco because of the Chinese. the Chinese. Because of the Chinese. So opium was used by white people, white women using opium, no problem, all right? When people of color start using it, then there's a fear. What would these Chinamen do when they're high on opium? Would they try to rape white women? Right. It, February 8, 1914, New York Times had a front page story, a, a huge story that dealt with Negro cocaine fiends have now turned to sniffing because because whiskey is prohibited. And this was the fear that black men, when they were high on cocaine, would try to rape white women. Yes. And they were asking, do, do police officers now have to carry a 45 caliber handgun to kill a Negro high on cocaine because a 38 is not powerful enough to do so? This was the, this was the right. New York Times 104 years ago. Either in Anslinger's testimony to the Congress or somewhere, and you would know this, Michael and Hotep, didn't somebody give the false story that there was a Negro who was high on cocaine or high on marijuana, and a police officer had to shoot him, I think, three different times to try to bring him down, and he was still lunging at the police officer. I don't remember that exact story. I remember hearing something like that. Yes. Okay, I don't remember that exact story. It may be in that article. I had to actually pay for a digital subscription to the New York Times to be able to go into their archives and read that article yes. from February 8, 1914, which incidentally was exactly one year before the movie The Birth of a Nation came out. Wow. February 8, 1915, wow. which is, it was, was the year The Birth of a Nation came out, which caused race riots in the streets, which showed white uh, black men trying to rape white virgins, right? right? right. And, 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 and rejuvenated the Ku Klux Klan. It was the movie The Birth of a Nation that showed right. the Ku Klux Klan as the heroes right. that basically rejuvenated the Ku Klux Klan in this country. Which, by the way, got a screening in the White House under Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson. Wilson. Right, another white supremacist. <laughs> yeah, Woodrow Wilson, absolutely. <laughs> but people need to check out this article because, see, if you look at what, what Jeff Sessions just did, with uh, the federal prosecutors uh, with marijuana. New York Times, January 4th, 2018, Trump administration takes step that could threaten marijuana legalization movement. So what happened was uh, Jeff Sessions is totally against any legal usage of marijuana. He's one of these backwards yes. Alabama people, right? Yes. Not saying all people in Alabama are backwards, but Jeff Sessions is, right? So they, they talk about how Attorney General Jeff Sessions, a lone vocal opponent of the legalization of marijuana, rescinded an Obama-era policy that discouraged federal prosecutors, in most cases, from bringing charges wherever the drug is legal under state laws, right? So they talk about how they like state laws, right? All right, except when it comes to marijuana. When, well, when it comes to black folks. Well, black folks too. Well, that also, yeah, right. that also. But what this is going to do is now he's leaving the judgment up to the federal prosecutors in states like California. January 1st, I just came from right. California. California did not want to come back. It was 75 degree weather there, by the way. <laughs> but uh, California just legalized uh, recreational marijuana usage. Mm -hmm. Okay? That went into effect January 1st, 2018, which deals with laws. Right. Politics impacts every aspect of your life, even if you own a business. Right. If you want to have a restaurant that serves alcohol, you have to get what's called uh, a liquor license from the state of Michigan. Right. It's all regulated by law. 
And you got to have a, a food handler's license, all this stuff, all regulated by law. Okay, so what, what this is doing then, this is possibly opening up the gates to further prosecution of African Americans with marijuana or it also opens them up possibly to have marijuana planted on them. Right. Because now they can be prosecuted, even in states where it's legal. Uh, recreationally or medicinally. Now, I, I've never used marijuana in my life, okay? I have no desire to. Never consumed it, never smoked it. It should be legal. I'm not an advocate for recreational marijuana, but it should be legal, just like alcohol was legal. Right. They legalized alcohol because they realized prohibition didn't work. Well, there's more alcohol use during prohibition. It, the prohibition, prohibition actually uh, empowered the mafia, and it was the Ku Klux Klan who was uh, for prohibition, they inadvertently gave rise and power to the mafia that was largely non-white Protestants. Right. They, they, there was a documentary on, I think, the American Heroes Channel, the History Channel, that talked about how the Ku Klux Klan really helped the mafia. Okay, <laughs> but but then if you look at this story out of uh, Cartersville, Georgia, one of those Confederate states, former Confederate states, right? Police arrested 63 people at a house party after finding less than one ounce of marijuana. Wow. Did you, you, you didn't hear about this story? I didn't know that story. Oh, no. oh, Cliff, look. Some of the attendees spent several days in jail. Some of them lost their jobs. So what happened was there was this house party that took place Cartersville, Georgia. Never been there. I was just in Atlanta December 29th, right, the Shrine of Black Madonna. But police in Cartersville, Georgia, Georgia responded to a call of an apparent, of apparent gunshots on Saturday night. But what they found was a house party with nearly 100 people celebrating someone's 21st birthday party. Now, there was some underage drink in there. Okay, understand that. They said they found some some guns there. Okay, one of the 163 guns. Okay, arrested people with the guns. But what happened was they found less than one ounce of marijuana. Of, of 63 attendees, nobody claimed it was theirs. So the police arrest all 63 people and said they all had access to the marijuana. Wow. Okay. Now now. You have police officers across the country who are saying, look, marijuana should be legal because we don't have time to chase these exactly. people. Exactly. This is a waste of time. Okay? Some of the, when you read the story, thinkprogress.org, thinkprogress.org, January 2nd, 2018, some of the people arrested were in, in jail for a few days. They lost their jobs. According to jail records, the 63 individuals who were arrested Saturday night were processed by Monday night. All were charged with a single count of marijuana possession. The individuals arrested were predominantly black males aged 19 to 25. I guarantee you, Thank if you. this was out in the white suburbs, and, and it was 63 white people, I guarantee you, those cops would not have messed with them, and they may have lit one up themselves. No doubt about it. <laughs> they, may have, they may have lit one up themselves with, 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 with them. I guarantee you, you would not have 63 people let me, arrested. Let me jump in right now. We've got Go Michael ahead. M. Hotep here in the studio. He is essentially the resident historian. Our number is 313-778-7600, 778-7600. Let's go to the phone lines real quick. we got Andrew on line one. Hey, Andrew, thanks for calling. You're on with Mike M. Hotep. Good. Hey, Andrew, how you doing, man? I'm a fan of LBJ. I wish you could, I want to give you some things I've read, and maybe you can tell me if I read wrong or right. You say you're a fan of LBJ? Yeah. yeah okay, go ahead. He did some things I thought the civil rights. Yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. He found those things. He said that goes to the for the Democratic Party, and that's mm -hmm. He was correct. Medicare, things like that. Correct. So he may have called us in words, but we call ourselves in words. So I'm not that concerned about that. Right. I think Look. Push it, uh, uh, the those, the uh, FBI, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the really push the civil rights after Cheney and Torn and, uh, and the guy was killed in for that. Yeah, Goodman, Torn, and Cheney, yeah. That was June 21st, 1964. Yes, yes. Viola Luzzo was from Michigan. She got Viola Louisa, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think LBG, the only problem he ran into was, the, 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 to me, was the Vietnam and the other side before him, really. And I don't think Kennedy was as picky on civil rights as people seem to think. And I like right. to comment. Yeah, right. So so Kennedy had to be pushed on civil rights because Kennedy stalled on civil rights when he became president. Uh, Johnson, he's correct with, with Johnson. So Johnson um, used the uh, N-word openly, and mm -hmm. he would verify, he would um, he would change the usage of the, the, the pronunciation of the N-word based upon who he was talking about, based mm -hmm. upon uh, uh, regional geography, things like this. So 
NBCnews.com has a really good article. I talked about this Sunday night on my show here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, 9 p.m. 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the African History Network show. Mike is L good getting those plugs. <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> Lyndon Johnson was a civil rights hero, but also a racist. Lyndon Johnson was a civil rights hero, but also a racist. And in and, and, and the article, they talk about how... Um, uh, in, in Senate in Senate cloakrooms and staff meetings, President Lyndon Johnson was a, practically a connoisseur of the N word, according to Johnson biographer Robert K Caro C A R O. Johnson would calibrate his pronunciations by region using different variations of the N word. I'm not going to say them on the air. Discussing civil rights legislation with then Mississippi Democrat James Eastland, Eastland yes. who, who committed most of his life to defending white supremacy, uh, uh, he simply called it the N-word bill, okay, referring to the Civil Rights Act. Now, the thing was, Johnson was somebody who could be pushed in the right direction to do the right thing. And this is what the civil rights community did, okay? This is what Dr. King and Ralph Abernathy, the big six uh, leaders, they were able to push him in the right direction to come out and advocate on behalf of the Civil Rights Act of 64. Then he, he was in opposition to the Voting Rights Act of 65 because he said, I just went to the Congress, used up my political capital last year, and got them to vote for the Civil Rights Act. OK, he said, I can't go back and have them vote for the Voting Rights Act. OK, but he was he was somebody who they could push in the right, right direction. And that's something that's important. See, a lot of times we get caught up on personalities when it comes to elected officials. And we say, well, I don't like this person. I don't like that person. One of the things you have to look for is you may not want them over for dinner. Right. But you got to find somebody who can be pushed in the right direction to do the right thing. Also, right. Trump is not one of them. Right. One thing about LBJ, too, is that he grew up relatively poor in the mm -hmm. mountain country yeah. of Texas. And one of his big pushes when he was president and was a senator from Texas was getting electricity mm -hmm. to poor people in Texas. He was not a big fan of the big wealthy Texans with a lot of money. Mm -hmm. He had some fights with them, and so uh, I, I think that that was part of the reason that he could be pushed. Right, in but, that but, but the caller was correct. Medicaid and Medicare came from President Johnson. Yes, yes. Federal Housing Act, 1968, President Johnson, yes. right? So it's not, right. it's not about... Endowment for the arts. Yeah, it's not about who you like, and that's my buddy, and I want them over for dinner, I want to have a beer with them. Who can you push in the right direction to get something accomplished? Right. Can Donald Trump be pushed in the right direction? Uh... He could, he may be able to be pushed to resign. <laughs> See, one of the things with Trump is you don't know where he stands. A few, a couple months, two or three months ago, was Chuck and Nancy. Then he turns on Chuck and Nancy. If you saw that debacle yesterday right. at the at the meeting that they had, you, you got Representative Kevin McCarthy trying to explain to him, trying to explain to Trump what Senator Feinstein is saying, because Trump is sitting there like he's the host of Celebrity Apprentice right. Moron <laughs> Edition, and he doesn't even understand what's taking place. And then they're debating over eighteen billion dollars, right, for this wall. That he said Mexico was supposed to pay for this wall. Right. Where Mexico wasn't at the meeting yesterday. Nope. Well, why? Why are you trying to take money from taxpayers to build a wall that you told people Mexico was going to pay for? Well, that goes back to his lying as well. That's one of the things that has amazed me is that he's been able to get away with so many lies. Well, the reason why he's been able to get away with so many lies is because a lot of Republicans won't call him out. Now, the Washington Post, MSNBC, CNN, they've been holding him accountable. Fox News has not. The reason was, But you have a lot of Republicans who are feeling pressure from their wealthy billionaire donors to repeal the Affordable Health Care Act, to get this tax cut passed. So they're letting a lot of things slide. But what we see, the article from Think Progress or talked about in the last couple of days, you have 29 House Republicans who have said they're not running for re-election. Yes. Okay? And, and, and Democrats need 24 seats to take back control of the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a bloodbath coming uh, November, two, November 6, 2018, midterm elections. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a bloodbath. And it's important for people to understand, people who say they want Trump impeached. Impeachment starts in the House of Representatives. Yes, it does. It's not going to happen with about 239 Republicans and 193 Democrats. Right. It ain't going to happen there. Okay. And I, I've, done, I've dealt with this because a lot of people don't understand impeachment. Um, impeachment does not mean removal from office. It means that right. the, the president is put on trial. Okay, because Bill Clinton was impeached in December right. 1998. He was. Exactly. Right. But but the but the but the trial is held in the U.S. Senate. Mm -hmm. Okay. So midterm elections are important. U.S. Senate, U.S. House of Representatives. This is all important. It's the U.S. Senate that the U.S. Senate that confirms uh, Supreme Court justice. Do you Go think ahead. there are Republicans who wouldn't mind seeing Trump removed from office because he has been so injurious to the Republican Party? 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because many of them said he's not a real Republican, number one. They, 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 they say his ideology is Donald Trump. Is it, he, he keeps changing. And uh, last night on uh, MSNBC, Dr. Jason Johnson, political editor for TheRoot.com, talked about Trump basically goes with whatever the last person in the room says. Because he keeps, you, 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 you trying to figure out what his ideology is, you can't figure it out. It's Donald Trump. Right. You know, whatever whatever's good for Donald Trump, that's his ideology, right? So what, what African Americans have to understand, we have to become more politically astute. Right. I'm all for economic empowerment, but economics imp economics impacts politics and politics impacts economics. Hey, let me shift gears here real Go quick because we're almost out of time. Tell okay. us about your lecture that is coming up on Sunday. So it's coming up uh, this Sunday, uh, January 14th at uh, Nan the new Nandy's Knowledge Cafe, 71 Oakman Avenue. Uh, in Highland Park, Michigan, right off of Hamilton. It's called African American Resistance in the Era of Donald Trump. Voter suppression, reparations, and how elections have consequences. Voter suppression, reparations, how elections have consequences. We'll deal with some of this type of information there. It's a free event. Donations accepted. Uh, visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com uh, for more information. You can also call us, 313-462-0003. 313-462-0003. And also, if you want me to do a presentation for your group or organization for African American History Month, call me or email me at uh, info, I-N-F-O at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, info at uh, I-N-F-O, uh, info at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com as well. Also hoping to get you on a little bit later this week as yes. we approach the King. Absolutely. Holiday. Give us a little preview. Now, Absolutely. I'm not sure <laughs> that the picture of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that's been painted mm -hmm. and universally um, promoted across this country Absolutely. is really realistic in terms of where Dr. King was coming from, uh, where his fire was, and what his real motives were. Well, Dr. King's legacy is one of our most misunderstood uh, heroes, uh, probably uh, Frederick <laughs> Douglass and Malcolm X as well. Dr. King's legacy has been distorted. It's been co-opted. Um, he was one of, he was a leader. But Dr. King uh, talked about uh, economic empowerment. He talked about boycotting uh, Coca-Cola, Hearts Bread, and Wonder Bread because of their, and still test milk because of the discriminatory hiring practices. Mm -hmm. He talked about supporting African-American institutions. In the speech, I've been to the mountaintop. It's about 43 minutes. They show us the last two minutes about talking about getting to the mountaintop. Right. No, he, 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 he told them, uh, he talked about economic boycotts. He talked about taking your money uh, out of the banks downtown, putting your money in Tri-State Bank. He talked about supporting African-American owned institutions, things like this. So, so this is left out when we talk about Dr. King. Uh, Dr. King uh, was, he, he was a supporter of the Black Power Movement. Okay, mm -hmm. he he backed away from using the term black power. It was uh, um, Willie Ricks, now Mukasa Dada, who I know and have interviewed before, and uh, uh, Kwame Ture, formerly Stokely Carmichael, they got him to use the term black power, mm -hmm. and he backed away from it, just saying that power has no color. Right. Okay, but but Dr. King is one of our most distorted, misunderstood leaders. Even going back to the the most famous, probably the most famous speech, I have a dream, which was originally called a cancel check, because right. the, the the speech was about economics. The speech right. wasn't about a dream. In the original draft of the speech, the phrase, I have a dream, didn't even exist. And therefore, does that mean that Dr. King is even more relevant today than people may think? He's more relevant today than people think, and he's, and he's similar to Malcolm X. Because towards the end of both of their lives, Dr. King and Malcolm X's ideologies were converging. Yes. And when Malcolm X officially separates from the Nation of Islam, March 8, 1964, Malcolm X gets involved in the Civil Rights Movement, which is not even talked about when you talk about Malcolm. Absolutely. We are out of time. Give us one more time your website. I know you like to promote that. Tell us how <laughs> folks can get in touch with you, Mike. All right. Hey, you visit my website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. You can order my DVD lectures there. Uh, we, you can read my articles that I write. We have information about upcoming lectures. I'll be at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe this weekend. Um, actually, Saturday and Sunday. Sunday, I'll be doing... Uh, uh, African American resistance in the era of Donald <laughs> Trump, and uh, listen to my radio show, the African History Network show, Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on 9 10 a.m. The Superstation, the Voice of Detroit. And you're gonna have me back uh, later this week to talk about the distortion of Dr. King's legacy. Also, we cannot wait for that. Always good to Absolutely. see you, brother. Mike hey, you too, man. And take care of yourself, also, uh, Cliff, as well, man. 2018 take care of your... is the year for taking better care of myself. Absolutely. All right, Mike M. Holtep, our favorite historian here in the studio, and we will have him back later this week, folks, as we approach the King holiday. Right now, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to take your calls at 313-778-7600. i got a few thoughts about a few more other things, and I'm going to share that with you. <laughs>